Cryptography fundamentals for finite fields, otherwise known as Galois fields. I bet you that you have a memory of school where you had the pleasure, or more likely the nightmare, of per performing long addition or long subtraction, and where you had carryovers between columns. The units carried over into the tens, the tens into the hundreds, and so on. And then you encountered long multiplication with those ever-growing lists of numbers that you had to count up. And please forgive me, you would then progress on to long division, and where you had a divisor dividing into a number and with the bar along the top and where you put your result and which gave those pesky remainders. Oh, teacher, 61 divided by 9 is 6, remainder 7. And didn't you just love throwing away the remainder and just making the answer 6? But in cryptography, the remainder is the bit that we like and we throw away the other bit. So for us, 61 mod 9 is 7, the remainder part. So just take a pause now to just calm yourself down on those memories. If you want to leave now, please do so as we will revis revisit some of those memories, but hopefully will make things a lot more simpler. To these additions and multiplications in an electronic circuit or some software code, there can be many operations. But just imagine a world where you did not need to carry over values from one column to another, and even where you all you had to do was to add or multiply with a zero or a one. Life would be so much easier, and these school nightmares would end for you, and life would be so much happier for your kids in learning mass. For example, if we take a binary adder, we have 0 plus 0 equals 0, 1 plus 0 equals 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 0. As we see with a simple binary adder, we just throw away that pesky carry. If we add 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0, we get the answer of 0. But in a normal mass, to add 7 plus 4 plus 3 plus 9 plus 8 requires us, up to, requires us to add up the units and carry over into the tens column. For simplifying things, we turn to Everest Galois. Galois lived from 1811 to 1832 and died from dueling wounds at the age of 20 but left a great legacy. While he was a teenager, he worked on polynomials and laid down the principles of Galois' theory, along with defining the concept of a finite field. Creating the reverse operation. As we have seen in previous podcasts, we have values in a group, and then we can operate on these to get another value in the group. So if we have a group of 16 to 7, 0 to 16, we can strain our values with a mod p operation and where p is a prime number. For example, if we take a prime of 17 and then take a value of 2 and then raise it to the power of 5 and take mod 17, we get 15. For all the values from 0 to 16, we should hopefully get a different mapping for the output. This will then allow us to reverse back by taking the inverse operation of the modulo power. This, as we have seen in a previous podcast, is to subtract 1 from the prime number to have phi equals to p minus 1 and then perform an inverse of the base modulo of the prime number minus 1. A simple Python program gives us the inverse pow 5 minus 1 16. The inverse of 5 mod 16. 16 is p minus 1. This gives us 13. If we now multiply apply a result of 15 by 13 and take mod 17, we magically get our value back again. pow 15, 13, 17. 15 to the power of 13 mod 17 gives 2. In this way, we aim to reverse our mathematical operations and where there is no confusion about the reverse operation. Simplifying things. Up to now, we have seen 
that we have operated on our normal mass operations for the mod p operation, such as for add, subtract, multiply and divide. But we can simplify things even more if we have a field of 2 to the power of n elements, and where if n is 8, we have 256 elements. 256 elements, for example, is the number of values that we can have for a byte of data in a computer system. If so, we can convert our bit values of our integers into a polynomial, and where we can then operate on them as polynomial operations, such as x squared plus 1 plus x equals x squared plus x plus 1. This, as we will see, significantly reduces the complexity of our arithmetic operations. And rather than having a complex circuit for adding with carryovers or multiplying, and where we end up with a value which has more bits than the input values, we constrain the calculations within our finite field. Along with this, we just need to add simple one-bit adders and or multiplication operations. So from complex adding and subtracting circuits and hardware or software, we end up with simple bit operations. This vastly increases the speed of our cryptographic operations. This is Galois fields and defined more generally as GF open brackets P to the power of N close brackets and where P is a prime number but in most cases P will be 2. Arithmetic operations. Within a finite field we limit the number of possible values into a group. As we have seen with this can be a prime number and where we get a group from 0 to p minus 1 and where we can perform our mathematical operations with the mod p operations. And so even though we have a finite field we still want our mass to operate as they do normally. The rules for every element in the group is then our normal mass rules. First, commutative law. This is where a plus b is equal to b plus a, or a times b is equal to b times a. doesn't matter the order that we do these in. Associative law. This is where b times open brackets bc, close brackets, is equal to b times open brackets ac. Distributive law. This is where a times open brackets b plus c, close brackets, is equal to ab plus ac. Additive and multiplicative identify identities, 0 and 1. This is where we have a plus 0 equals a, and a times 1 is equal to a. Additive and multiplicative inverses. This is where there can be an additive inverse, and where a value of b for a we can find a value of b for a so that a plus b equals 0. For multiplicative inverse, there is a value of b for a so that a times b equals 1. With our finite field in cryptography, we want all of these to work so that we can reverse the operations that we apply. Gawa fields. Within a field, we can operate on values in the field using arithmetic operations. We can thus have an infinite field where we could include all the possible integers. But a Gawa field constrains these to gf p to the power of n and which has p to the power of n elements. Typically, we use Gala's field 2 to the power of n. And so, Gallus field 2 to the power of 4 has 16 values in the field. So let's say we have Gallus field 2 to the power of n and have a number from a equal to 0 to 2 to the power of n minus 1. We can then represent these as a vector in the polynomial form of 
a is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared and so on to a n minus 1 subscript x to the power of n minus 1. And for this, the a values will be either a 0 or a 1. Either the polynomial power will exist or not. And this is exactly the same as representing a polynomial number modulo 2 to the power of n. In this, x to the power of n represents the bit position of n. And a underscore n is the value of the bit at the position x to the power of n. If the bit is a zero at a given position, it will not be included in the polynomial equations. So first, let's talk about modulo 2 operations. They're really quite simple. For this, an addition is 0 plus 0 equals 0, 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 0 equals 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 0. And we ignore the carry. This is an exclusive OR gate. For multiply, we have 0 times 0 is equal 0, 0 times 1 equals 0, 1 times 0 equals 0, and 1 times 1 equals 1. Also known as an AND gate. So 1, 0, 1, 1 can be represented as x cubed plus, there's no x squared, so we have x plus 1, and 1, 0, 1, 0 is represented as x cubed plus x. We can then perform arithmetic operations with these polynomial values. So to add two values of 1, 0, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 0, 0, we can represent this as x cubed plus x plus x cubed plus x squared, and which will give x squared plus x as we're using modulo 2 addition, because x cubed plus x cubed is equal to 0. An example of a Galois field is with AES, Advanced Encryption Standard, and which used a, a finite Galois field of 2 to the power of 8. With AES, we operate on bytes, 8 bits, in the form b7, b6, b5, up to b1, and which are operated on by a polynomial value. Oh, and we don't need prime numbers anymore. We have what are called irreducible polynomials or primitive polynomials. And these are polynomials that cannot be factored into polynomial factors. I will cover this in a future presentation, but for just now, when we divide by an irreducible polynomial, we will reduce the value back into our finite field. So this operates in a similar way to a mod p operation, and where we can reduce the group just by taking the remainder from a division. A few examples. So in the related podcast page, I have a few examples. It's a little bit difficult to explain them in this podcast, so please refer to these examples. First, let's take a equal to x squared plus x plus 1, or 1, 1, 1 in binary, and b is x plus 1, or 0, 1, 1 in binary and with a primitive of x to the power of 4 plus x plus 1. This is a Gallus field of 2 to the power of 8, so there are 16 possible values. For the addition, we get x squared, because we take x squared plus x plus 1 plus x plus 1. The x and the 1s cancel out, so we end up with just x squared. This is 1, 0, 0. And for multiplication, we get x cubed plus 1. This is because for the multiplication, when we take x squared plus x plus 1 times x plus 1, we get x cubed plus x squared plus x squared plus x plus x plus 1. That gives x cubed plus 1 because the x squared and the x values cancel out. 
As the power of the multiplication is not greater than x to the power of 4 and above, there is no need to divide by the primitive polynomial. And so for the following, we'll, we get the run of an add is x squared, subtract is also x squared, a multiply is x cubed plus 1, and a divide is x cubed plus x squared. For the division, we determine the inverse of b of the inverse of the polynomial b and then multiply it by a. In this case, we have a times b to the minus 1. And that is equal to x squared plus x plus 1, which is the a. And then the inverse of b is actually x cubed plus x squared plus x. And then if we do the mass, we end up with x to the power of 5 plus x cubed plus x. As we have a power higher than the field, we now need to define by our primitive polynomial x to the power of 4 plus x plus 1. When we do this, we end up with a, a remainder of x cubed plus x squared. I've put a related link in the in the blog web page so that you can actually see this calculation and also we have an example website to do the, the computation. So I have another few examples in the in the related page if you want to try them. But overall, when we multiply and when we divide, we will end up with a polynomial value which will have a power greater than uh, the field that we've defined. So we must divide by the irreducible polynomial to bring it back. For this, we divide by it and then we'll take the remainder from it. Okay, so there are a number of examples that you can, you can try. And I've also got a Python, a Python program for you to be able to do these computations within our polynomial values. So for irreducible polynomials, the prime number equivalence of what we did previously is to do it with an irreducible polynomial. And this is a polynomial which cannot be factored. It is not the same as the polynomials we would typically see, such as x squared plus 2x plus 1 can be factored into x plus 1 times x plus 1. Those are different because we are dealing with modulo 2 uh, operations. I'll leave a link on the web page so that you can actually try them out but I'll revisit this in a future podcast. Conclusions. Well, you've made it to the end of this podcast. If you've managed to understand everything here, you deserve a crypto medal. If not, and that's for most people, you should try and read it over and eventually it will sink in. Slowly at first, and then you will get the bits and pieces of knowledge and eventually it will all make sense. This is one of the reasons that I love cryptography and I teach and research in the field as every day I learn. But my learning was, my learning is so much deeper once I really understood the basic principles and get behind the mass. I hope I've not given you nightmares of your school days of long division and multiplication. But if I have, I can just calm you down that the mass that we use in cryptography is so much simpler and where we just have to count up to one or zero and so life is so much more relaxed in crypto space. Thanks.